Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Here we join the Archer 3 probe after its year-long voyage into the void, which is about to encounter Moho. That's right, we do not have the Delta V to do a capture around Moho. We need about 6,000 minutes per second and we only have 2.4, which is still an insane amount, but it's just, I really, I was hoping it would be less and it's, it's nowhere near enough. So there we go, we are now in high orbit around Moho and where is the great brown space potato? There it is. Hiding over there. Let's hide the UI. There it is. Look at that. Isn't that just cool? There's a big old, big old rock. And what we can do now is, of course, collect some of our high orbit science. So there's a material study. We have the engineering test bay. Um, we perform a series of ex experimental rocket components. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, we have the RPWS, which, with no atmosphere, little, no magnetic, and little magnetic field to interact with, the solar plasma merely slips around Moho. Ah, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a one-night stand of soda plasma. Uh, don't you just hate that? All right, log of visual observations. There appears to be a lot of dust and um, rocks around uh, Moho. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I didn't expect too much more from a barren rock this close to the sun. This is, of course, our sort of Kerbal Space Program Mercury analog. Uh, let's get that temperature data. Measuring the temperature of space appears quite impossible. There is no matter around to be either hot or cold, except the spacecraft and the thermometer itself. This is going to give the R&D guys something to scratch their head about. And considering we got the same information from our readings around Kerbin, you think they would have stopped bothering to put these on solar craft now. But no, guess not. Solar craft, what are those? Spacecraft! Yes. Okay. So I think what we're going to do, right, is we're going to push ourselves a little bit closer to Moho. Is this the right direction? It is. Let's try and get like 15, cal 15 kilometers above. Oh, uh, this is for some reason throttled down quite a bit. There we go. And we can fire that. There we go. Getting some real displacement going here. And that fetches us, boom, 10,000 Funderunos. Not 10,000 Funderunos, but we're damn close. Oh, and we should have gotten world first for doing this, right? Uh, first flyby of Moho, 33,000. We've escaped, escaped the gravitational influence of the sun. And we have gathered the first scientific data around Moho. Wow, I am slurring so much today. I'm not drunk. It's, I, mean, I wish, you know, right? God damn it. No, I'm just, I'm just apparently uh, incapable of normal speech. Okay, let's move forward. I did exercise this morning for like the first time in a month. So, you know, you know when your mouth gets like that dry spit? Yeah. When you exercise after a while? That's what I got going on right now. I'm sure you guys are really interested in knowing that. So, you know, you're welcome. Okay, so we're actually going to be approaching Moho and all of its various bits from the dark side, which is a bit of a shame because, you know, it's not quite as pretty. We could adjust the light a bit, but that looks kind of jank. So we're just going to put that back. Oh, wow. Oh, Lord, no. Okay, let's let's go up a little bit there so you can see the planet at least because uh, that's pretty dark otherwise. Maybe a little bit more? There you go. Okay, so that's what Moho looks like. Hmm, not too shabby, is it? Okay, well, we need to make sure we don't get... Uh, we don't lose... All of our connections with Kerbin. We're still high over Moho. Jeez, how low do we have to be? Probably below 10Ks, eh? Still high? Really? Oh, right, because we're going to go a full 10 kilometers. That's, uh... There we go. Okay, space near Moho. we got to be quick. we got to be quick. we got to be quick. Oh, I really should have had these open. Oh, God, I'm a fool. I'm a fool. Uh, and I've lost my... And I've lost my signal. Damn, well, hopefully we get it back before we lose all ability to, uh... Take readings from below, Moho. I wish it was a half-speed option, but isn't that interesting? Look at that terrain, guys. Ah, oh, damn. I really, really, really do want to to get some screenshots of this. So I'm going to snap those real quick. <laughs> In fact, actually, can we uh, can we grab one? Just like It's probably going to be the thumbnail. It's a shame it's such a shitty angle. Because I can't move this craft still. No signal. No signal at all. Oh, it's pretty. Oh, it's pretty around Moho. Oh, damn. Okay, well, that was that. Unfortunately, we have already moved beyond, I think, low orbit. Uh, are we still in orbit low? I can't tell. We'll have to wait till we get signal back. Unfortunately, Kerbin is right behind the planet. This was a very unfortunate time for such things. We're going to just fast forward a bit till we get signal back, and uh, we're high over Moho again. So that's that science gone. But I will see you guys back at the KSC because we have a bit of catching up to do, and I will explain more of that right now. And having completed a rather cinematic flyby of Moho, we arrive back at the KSC to find that we have received a new report for funding. 
Ooh, we're getting 11,760. You see, now the funding's actually starting to make a bit of a dent, um, which is which is bloody nice, I must say. And I believe that's because... Ooh, I don't even know. Um, I guess it's going up. <laughs> that's where it was, and this is where it is now. And that's simply because I think we now have um, some active bases. For example, the one on Minmus. That's right. Uh, I recorded an entire episode before this, but the power died halfway through at my place. And so the footage was lost. That's right. I'm recording an MP4 format because it's a bit more compact. But that does mean that when we lose power, we lose the, you know, the entire recording. Uh, so Chronospace is officially landed at Minmus. We also went ahead and rescued two Kerbals named uh, Edbert and Katus, I think, who are a pilot and an engineer. Uh, no, no, a scientist. No, an engineer and a scientist, respectively. Yes. So we have two new Kerbals. And uh, here we go. Here is our Minmus base. There's no one in it at present. And I just added this little relay antenna because I figured, you know, eh, we might as well turn this hemisphere of Minmus into a relay. So, uh, yeah, we've got a relay antenna now on our base core. And uh, that's just going to sit here and do things. And it'll, you know, we'll have other modules landed next to it, which will be wired up to it using these pipes and potentially even docked with it if we can get some small rovers or something, maybe. But yeah, that's 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 not going to do much right now until we get a contract to expand it. What we also have, let's go into our uh, main view, go back around Kerbin and switch to the Atlas station because we also expanded this. That's right, we have added a life support module and uh, reshuffled things quite a lot. Uh, let's just zoom in on it. There we go. Oh, 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 I expected it to load far away. The game's been doing that. I don't know why. But yes, here it is. Here's our life support module. It's got um, this recycling unit, two of these small agricultural units, agroponics, apparently they're called. And here we go. We have the large Nomomatic 25,000i. And that's got another four docking ports for the station. We also moved, you know, the fuel tank to be on the fuel tank side because that just made more sense. And we put the little, uh, what do they call this thing? The tug, a little tug on the top here. So that it's easy to get to other parts of the station. We don't have to go around it. We just sort of go out, up, and then straight back in. Much simpler. But yeah, so there we go. We do have a bit of small expansion to the station. I can't wait till we get the large 2.5 meter docking ports because then I don't have to have these sort of little janky connections. We can plug large pieces together. Um, yeah, but that's, that's pretty much it for now, uh, and I can't think of anything else we've done. Oh, that's right, we transmitted the science from this station. That's right, we got another 46 in there, so we can transmit that too, which gives us a total of, wow, it's going to be about a thousand science. There we go, 999.2 science. So that's going to allow us to unlock three more nodes within the uh, research and development center, which will be bloody cool. So in fact, why don't we head over to the space center now, and uh, work out what we're going to unlock. So here we are in the research and development center, and I'm trying to work out exactly how we're going to structure our research. Hmm, what are we gonna get? Because I'm really keen to get this node here, which is high altitude flight, because that will give us access to these ramjet engines, which bring us pretty close to getting SSTOs. And those would be so cool. And we will need it to get this one here, which gets us the rapier engine and these aerospikes, which are ridiculously efficient rocket engines. And uh, they will they will make they will make SSTO planes very possible. So we could have our own space shuttles, basically. Hmm, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm gonna get that one. Then what else are we gonna get? Now composites is temp composites is tempting because we get this double mystery goo uh, containment pod. So two experiments for the price of one, or at least for the you know physical size of one. Uh, we also have unmanned tech, which gives us access to uh, the fly-by-wire av avionics hub, which is like a little nose cone um, for probes. It's quite nice. Uh, we also get access to the seismic hammer. That's a surface experiment. And we're not doing many landings at present. We could also get electronics, which gives us three new science experiments. Mm -hmm. And that's this one probably isn't bad, considering we want to go to EVE at some point. And that's, uh, both of these are atmospheric sensors. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, okay, buy that one. So we got 399 science remaining. Now I think maybe we should get something from up here. I'm kind of tilting towards uh, the clampertrons here because this gives us this multi-point connector, which is a nice core point for your stations. But it also gives us access to, uh, we could also get access to these large fuel containers and this large storage container. That would really ramp up our ability to uh, do things. 
I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We're going to get large fuel containment. And uh, the reason for that is we will get access to these huge fuel tanks. And we can go ahead and make a multi-engine solution. Because we're going to need some heavy lifters. But before we get any heavy lifters, we're going to need an absolute dick ton more money. That's right. We are... We are so close to being broke. I know it doesn't look like it, but at this point, one mission is costing like 250,000 funds um, because of the reusable nature of our rockets. And if they go wrong, then we lose all that money and we can't launch another. So I think what I'm going to do is graft, 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 and do a few tourism contracts. Um, I probably won't show them because those are a lot of work. But uh, yeah, which one should we grab? Perhaps um, landing on Minmus with three tourists? We could use that opportunity to take some more stuff to the base. Yeah, that would be cool. Okay, so we can take that one. Um, we're going to have to build a special craft for that, though, because our current little craft won't be able to do it. Fly by a Minmus with two tourists. Uh, that's an option, I suppose. I suppose. We could bring three tourists to the Atlas Station. We do need to put our crew back up there. Two tourists to bring the Kronos base. Yes, because we're going there anyway, right? So that works. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, we're going to use this to uh, move things. And maybe it's time to do that space camp. You know, we do have the facilities now with that life support module. Um, all we need is, I think we probably have to put up some more solar panels, though, before we do this, because this is going to be a lot of electricity drain. Okay, okay, so we have our mission today. Our mission today is to get a lot more money. That's right, we're going to get, like, a lot, a lot more money as well. And then what we can do is also go ahead and get our mission to crew Chrono Space. So that's right, we're going to be going to the Chrono Space. We finally have a use for it. And we're going to drop some Kerbals in there, get some tourists to visit, and the other ones can just land on the surface. All right, I will see you guys once I think we are on the launch pad with our newly designed craft. And as promised, here we are on the launch pad. And it's future me. That's right. This is actually being voiced over about three days afterwards. Um, but there is the craft itself. Good and proper. It is launching on the Starpoint 2 launcher. No, that's the Starpoint 1 still. That's right. With the uh, recoverable booster stage. Very nice. And that very impressive main stage. We've got a lot of use out of this launch platform, actually. Like, um, quite a few of the craft I have designed for future episodes are using exactly this. And so they're, they're quite effective at their job. Anyway, you guys have seen these ascents quite often and uh, this craft is not particularly complex i'll explain more when we sort of get into orbit but as you can see it has a little agroponics module on top there which really just didn't prove to be sufficient in the end um pretty average actually we got we got a full nine souls on board including the crew so there's quite a lot going on anyway there's me ditching the um that second stage that brought us all the way there and firing up the third only to realize that i'm actually kind of shy on fuel because i had it cross feed enabled and the second stage had been eating into our third and fourth stage fuel but yeah, the craft is pretty straightforward. You'll actually notice that the um, bottom part there with the ladder sticking out of it, is, that's actually designed to stay on Minmus. That's right, once we land, um, that will be left behind and uh, will actually serve as another module on our chrono space. So I figured, you know, since we're going there, might as well leave our little launcher. And that's actually pretty true to life. Anyway, it ran out of fuel, so this is me bringing the fuel refueler drone in, launched on the same platform in the same way. I'm actually quite a proud of this one because I didn't even need to use that fuel in that tank at all. I was able to achieve a stable orbit and the rendezvous just using the mono propellant, so the engine is even active, which I think is pretty damn cool indeed. Anyway, we get old Bill out to come and uh, link up the two vessels um, with the pipes from Kerbal Detachment System, KAS. Uh, and oh, unfortunately, I was, again, played with the issue of not being able to transfer resources, which it turns out is simply a bug with regards to the settings in the game. All you need to do is turn on uh, the setting that allows crossfeed to ignore certain rules. Um, it does technically mean, you know, it gets a bit unrealistic because you can transfer fuel um, across ablative shields which isn't sort of law correct or you know even science correct. Anyway, there's me throwing all the fuel in there. And anyway, there's me throwing all the fuel in there and completing that transfer, good and proper. It wasn't exactly difficult to do. I decide, however, that, you know, we shouldn't let that refueler drone go to waste. I mean, it's, it's a perfectly good craft. So why not launch it down and head towards Minmus for a bit? In fact, actually, we are able to do most of the launch. I mean, there's not much fuel left in it. So it was sending it down more for the remaining life support supplies that it had. Um, but yeah, we, we managed to do most of the deorbit and as you can see here, most of the landing using again just monopropellant. Uh, monopropellant engines are not very efficient, but I did bring quite a bit of fuel along with this thing, so it wasn't exactly difficult to do. Anyway, we touched down on that poodle engine resting pretty stable, 
Um, it's, it definitely could be better, you know, but I figure out, you know, if I just attach the SAS and force it to look directly north or directly upwards rather from the planet's surface, then it will hold itself rigid using its little um, internal reaction wheels. Anyway, here's me landing finally the Chronos base expansion. This took a surprisingly large amount of time. I'm not very good at coordinating ground landings. It's, it's surprisingly difficult outside of atmosphere because you've got no lift or drag really to work with. So any velocity you add into your motion, you have to remove. And that means if you know if you only got a single point uh, of a thrust like I have here with this craft, um, you have to flip the entire craft around to eliminate, you know, sort of horizontal velocities or diagonal velocities that you were not expecting. For example, as you can see here, I'm trying to fire up, there we go, and we flip the whole craft and move it that way. But I was trying to fire my engines directly downwards, and that was so that I could get some vertical velocity so I would have time to wipe off the horizontal. Anyway, we touched down briefly there for a, for a microsecond, but I realized that I'm just too far away, so we need to move this craft a lot closer. <laughs> and so began the first of uh, many, many, many attempts to move this thing closer, and all I really succeeded in doing there was just sort of putting it on the other side of the base and using a bunch of my fuel, so, you know, not exactly mission accomplished, but anyway, enjoy this. Anyway, eventually I say, screw it, you know what, we're close enough, and I get all bill out again to um, link up these craft, and basically all he needs, oh, actually first I'm stealing the monopropellant thrusters, because I figured, you know what, maybe we could, uh, you know, fly that craft over, but ultimately I decide, you know what, that's actually not worth it, and uh, I decide inevitably to just uh, link it all up, and there's me trying to climb up an engine in low G, it's not exactly the most effective thing in the world, but yeah, I'm sort of just decide, you know what, I'm going to pile all those thrusters in there so we have some spares, you can use them to make like really small probes, um, which you can actually use to fly around Minmus pretty effectively, and that's an idea I do have for a future episode, you know, we have like a monorepellent thruster powered probe, and it would just be really, really small, but it would go to all the various biomes and just get the simpler bits of science, you know? Um, perhaps just have like a small solar panel, just a very, very simple low profile mission. Anyway, poor Bill has to run a few marathons here because you can't fly when you've got all those heavy blocks in your inventory. That's right, Kerbal attachment system and inventory system rather actually does account for the mass of the objects in your Kerbal's inventory. So it's, it's quite comprehensive and nice sort of down to earth. Not that, you know, real life astronauts were hawking around uh, blocks of stone. But there's me taking off one of the monopropellant tanks from this craft, because I didn't have any thrusters on it, like an idiot, and uh, realizing that, you know what, actually, rather than destroying them, I could attach them to the piece that I'm leaving behind, and they can act as a bit of storage, uh, which has never, you know, never gone awry, or oh, storage is always good. So we end up transferring a few of our Kerbals over to the base. In fact, I think the only one I left behind was Edbus Kerbin. Um, oh, and that's right, to my loyal subscribers, those of you that have made it this far in the video, if you would like Kerbals named after you, please just let me know in the comments below. And all you have to do is like us on Facebook or Twitter and share one of my videos, your favorite one so far, on your account just to bring some traffic to the channel. And uh, yeah, as long as I can see that you do that, please be sure to tag me. I will gladly name a Kerbal after you. Um, this will only apply to Kerbals that are to come. And that's just simply because uh, these ones are already off planet, because what I'll need to do is rescue the Kerbal and then, um, you know, delete him and add in a new and cheat in a new one with your name and details. And you guys can set your exact stupidity or courage levels. It's all completely up to you, as well as the name of the Kerbal and even their gender and appearance. Anyway, there was us going back into a Minmus orbit and here's us returning. I will, of course, make this the same announcement about the Kerbals uh, at the beginning of our next video. But this one right here was made for you loyal subscribers that actually watch this far in. Most people don't get more than 66% into the video, which is not terrible, considering I have no idea what I'm doing with regards to YouTube, and that those numbers are actually pretty high. Some people don't get more than 40% 40, 40 of their videos are watched, which is rather sad, you know? You're making a 30-minute video and someone watches 40% of it. It just... You feel like they're not going to get the full experience, but I suppose they don't want the full experience. They're only wanting 40 seconds or 40%, do they? 
So, uh, yeah, anyway, enough of me slurring terribly. I really do need to record these at any point in the day that isn't midnight, but, you know, then it wouldn't be that largely unemployed experience. And anyway, without further ado, I think we're going to wrap this episode up. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed, please hit that like button, and if you didn't, hit that dislike button. Otherwise, be sure to subscribe, and please, please, please share the videos that you enjoy. Not the ones you don't, just the ones that you do, because it's uh, large, the channel has stagnated somewhat with regards to subscriber and views growth, so uh, it would be really cool if we could bump that up a bit. Anyway, enough begging. I love you guys very much, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.